there's a lot to this UI. Um, I'm going to be touching on just about every piece of this at some point during this demonstration. Um, but for now, uh, just quick, quick intro to the uh, the key components. Um, on the left hand side here, we have our different UI areas. Uh, the top one being our plugins, and we have our, our connections, which will where we do most of our, our configuration. Uh, we have our templates, which you will get to see today to some extent. Uh, we have our staging area where we can see what what we're pushing to the runtime service, uh, and then we we can our, our state monitor. So for now, just know they exist. We'll we'll touch on all of those in more detail in a moment. Um, one thing that we will not do as part of the the training today is go through the installation process and the licensing process. Um, they're not complex. Uh, we do have a very excellent quick start guide that we can um, email out to, to people if they're interested. That walks you through the uh, the licensing, the installation, uh, but that, that was time we uh, we figured it was better spent going through the the technical piece today. So uh, that that's something we won't be be covering as part of this. Yeah, Mark, I'll give everybody access to the quick start guide when we send out the recording. I'll include a link to that. Great, thanks, John. Yes, sir. Um, so the the first piece when we're designing an OPC router. Uh, configuration is we have to define our endpoints. We have to define our plugins. Uh, so what that means is a, a plugin is the OPC router's connection to the outside world. Um, so this is going to be applications out there in our in our factory on the shop floor in in our our system that we want to get data out of or we want to get data into. Uh, so if if we go back to that basic example. Uh, we're reading data out of an OPC server, uh, our top server in this case, and we're going to be pushing it to a database. So the two plugins that I have to configure here are going to be one, uh, the OPC DA server plugin, um, and the Microsoft server plugin. So these are going to represent the uh, the data source and data destination once we get into deeper into the configuration. Um, so really easy to do. Um, if we double click the OPC DA uh, section, we can add a new uh, server plugin. Uh, I'm gonna give it a name. Oops. Uh, and then because it's an OPC DA connection, uh, we just need to now browse to, uh, to our server. And that's actually all the configuration that I have to do. Um, I can go in and I can play around with the update rates and dead bands, and we can configure redundant data sources uh, there's a lot of configuration I can do. Um, it's just not something that we're going to do as part of the uh, the technical. That's all the configuration that I need. Um, notice I didn't have to browse the tags. I didn't have to define what data items I'm actually uh, interested in. At this point, all I'm configuring is there is an OPC server out there that I'm going to be interacting with uh, once I start configuring my uh, my connections. Um, now let's do the same thing for my SQL Server instance. Um, you can see that I already have one defined here. Let's actually delete that because we'll be uh, recreating that. Um, add a new uh, server connection. So this is uh, this is my local SQL instance. Uh, this is locally hosted, so this is running on my local machine. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and enter my credentials. And we can now see, we can browse the uh, databases available in my SQL server, uh, of which there's only one. Um, as with the OPC DA plugin that, that I just configured earlier, we have all sorts of redundancy and timeout settings that we can configure. Uh, we're just not gonna configure it as part of the technical demo today. Um, I can check my connection, which confirms I am able to connect to that database. Um, and that's all there is to the plugin configuration. Um, now you see the plugin list is long. Uh, there's a lot that we could configure, but for the most part, the configuration I did here is going to carry over into all the other plugins. Um, there's going to be some plugin specific, you know, settings, of course, but for the most part, they're very quick configurations. Um, so from here, we, we've configured our data source and our data destination. Um, Going right down the left-hand side here, let, let's configure a connection or, or, or data flow. I, I like to refer refer to them as. Um, so let's add a new connection here. Um, I'll call this our demo one connection. 
And at this point, we get to we get to start building our, our data flow. Um, and in order to build that data flow, I'm actually going to jump right over here to our, our toolbox over on the other side of the, uh, the UI. Um, and these are all the components I have available to build these connections, to build these data flows. Um, now, I've, I've created an OPC DA plugin and a database plugin. So those are going to be the two components that I'm, I'm going to uh, just click and drag to my, my workspace here. Um, so you notice they're not instantiated. There's no configuration showing. They're just generic OPC DA server and a database object. Um, so to configure them, let me uh, double click this and we're gonna bind this to an instance, which is, this is a top server instance, the DA connection that I just configured earlier. And now I'm gonna get to go and browse to the tags that I'm actually interested in. Um, so just a standard tag browser, um, and I have, I have some simulated data in my, my server. So let me just add one of these tags um, and we can, we can browse right to that. So this would pull out the value. Um, now what I can also do, um, I will need something to trigger this connection. So if I come to my OPC trigger uh, area, again, over here in my toolbox, um, I'm going to add a data change trigger Move this out of the way here. And again, I'm going to bind this to uh, my top server and I need to specify what, what item I want to monitor. Uh, so again, I'm just going to monitor that same simulated tag. Um, I'm actually going to use the metadata output from this. So what that metadata output does is it gives us access to the, uh, the quality value timestamp and, and the item name of, of this connection. Um, and I'm actually going to delete this. We, we don't even need this in here right now. There's multiple ways to set up this logging. We're just going to use the value of our trigger item to, uh, to log this. That makes it a little, little simpler. Uh, so you can see after I've bound my data change trigger uh, to this sim tag one in my server, uh, we now get access to the value of that, that tag, to the quality, the value, and the item name. Um, so now let's configure a database. And I, I'll double click the database instance and pull that up. Uh, we'll need to bind that to our SQL Server container instance. Um, and the type of interaction that I want to do with that database is I want to insert data into it. And you can see we can delete it, we can call store procedures, we can do a lot with it. Um, in this case, we're logging data, so we're just wanting to insert that, uh, that data in. Uh, so the next step here is we need to select our, our table, of course. Uh, I have a router logging table already built. And you can see the columns that I have access to as part of that. So these are columns that uh, I can use if I want to, I don't have to. So you can see by default, they show up in the available columns um, area of the configuration, and I don't have any that I'm using right now. Um, so I'm just gonna add all of them. Uh, we're gonna make sure something gets logged to all of these, uh, the, these columns in our, in our database. So from here, it's, it's, it's click and drag. It's really easy to, to bind these. So the, the value of my trigger, I want to, of course, go to my tag value column. Um, my quality ID is going to go to my quality column. Uh, the time is going to go to my uh, timestamp column. The uh, item name is going to go to my tag name column. I'm not going to do anything with the quality string, which is just going to be the, the string good or bad. Um, and you can see there's two columns here that I haven't done anything with, one of them being the system time and the other the system ID. Um, so just as part of this demo, um, we don't have to populate these columns all from the same data source. Um, so just because we can, let me uh, throw something in here. I'm going to grab this variables object out of my toolbox. You can see there's a few variables already defined, one of them including the system time. So this is a, this timestamp of the system where the OPC router instance is running. So let's, uh, let's log that just in case it's different than the OPC timestamp that my OPC server is sending me. Um, and then the system ID, uh, this is just going to be a constant value that this OPC router is logging. Um, in scenarios where you might have multiple OPC router instances or, or multiple data sources logging to the same table, um, logging some sort of constant lets you easily identify where, uh, where that data is coming from. Um, so I'm just going to log a constant value of one. And that's it. Now, that's actually all there is to this, this configuration. Uh, we have a, a trigger that's going to, uh, to, uh, to drive these data inserts to the database. 
Um, and we can see that we're, uh, we're pushing all of these values to our, our database. So the next step is going to be, we just need to push this configuration to our, our runtime service, which there's a little button right up here in the top left corner, set connection productive. So let's click that. And you can see it actually jumped me all the way down here to this go productive, the staging view. Um, that gives you an opportunity to review what changes you're making to the runtime service. Um, the highlighting of these components is very important. Uh, highlighted components that are green are going to be new components that you're uploading to the runtime service. Um, in this case, this was a new connection, so <laughs> they're, they're all, all green. Anything that's red would be getting deleted from the runtime service, and anything yellow would be uh, unchanged. Um, so I'm happy with, with my staging view. Uh, so I can hit this set connect connection productive button again, um, and you can see this is now going to push it up to the runtime service. I'll give that a, a moment. So because I configured new plugins, I'm going to have to restart the service as part of that, which is what it was warning me here. Um, push that up. because my service isn't currently running, it needs to start as part of that. And that's all there is to it. So this is now running in my runtime service, and we're actually gonna jump all the way down here to this last uh, part of the UI, the state view, and we can monitor this demo one connection. And we'll give it some time to initialize here. We will see in the, uh, in the monitor view at the top here when those data transfers start happening. Um, and then I'll jump over to SQL and we can see the uh, the data get inserted there as well. Give this a moment to, uh, to initialize. Since the service wasn't running when we uh, we did this upload, it's going to take it a while to go through uh, the startup. Uh, which while that's happening, talk a little bit of what this state view lets us do. It lets us monitor what the current state of these connections are. That, that includes uh, data transfers, what the current values are that are being transferred. Um, let's you see the current state, so we can see this yellow means it's initializing and it's checking connection. Um, and then it also lets us see history of all data transfers that have happened in the past. Um, so this is going to go through its initialization now. Um, and what we're looking for are these little green dots that are going to start appearing at the top here, symbolizing our, our data transfers. Oh, and there we go. That, that's what we're looking for. So each of these little green dots symbolizes a, uh, a data transfer. Um, this is logging data that's changing every second. So we're, we're expecting these update just about every second. Um, and the height of the dot shows us how long it's uh, it's taking to, um, to complete that data transfer. Um, now, the other thing that we can, uh, we can look at here, we can actually see the live values that are getting transferred right here in our state monitor. So uh, some of the ones that are kind of cut off at the end, we can mouse over and we can see what the value is that's being uh, being transferred. Um, so we can kind of get a feel for how this flow is doing and, and how it's behaving. Um, the other important piece of this and the, the cool feature of the OPC router, um, we can actually see a full listing of all data transfers that have happened. So we can see every data transfer that's happened going back quite some time and this is also configurable. So how, how long the data gets uh, maintained here, or retained here rather, uh, is something that we configure as part of the OPC router, uh, just general general settings. And just in case you uh, don't believe me, we can also jump in here and let's uh, let's query this guy really quick and we can see the data get, get generated here. Um, so as, as expected, there's no big surprises. We can see that the same values that we saw on the uh, OPC router site now manifesting here in, in SQL Server. Um, so um, that's actually all there is to the, the first demo. It's, it's really quick and easy to go in and, and set up logging. Um, but if I were on your side of this, uh, this training, I would now sit here and say, well, I don't have to just log one point very often. Usually it scales a little bit. So I don't really want to have to configure this connection a hundred times if I'm wanting to log a hundred points. Um, and so I promise I'd show you a basic introduction to templates. Um, so let's do that. Let, let's create a template from this connection. Um, right click on the connection, we can create a template from this. Um, give it a name and we can show where do we want this, uh, this template to be created. 
that'll automatically uh, create our, uh, our template here. So if we jump down now, you can see our demo one connection template. Um, let's open that up and see how that's different from our actual connection. And in case you missed it, it did open up a new tab at the top here. And you might say, well, that doesn't look any different at all. And you're not wrong. What templates allow us to do is they allow us to now dynamic, you know, designate one of these fields as being dynamic. So let's say that I don't want to monitor SimTag1 every time that I create one of these connections. I want this field to be dynamic. So if I hit the little plus button next to that field, it sets it to be dynamic. And this is now something that we can populate as part of um, using this template to create instances. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, we can see this now no longer has the tag name in here. It's just an OPC address. Um, and, and let's, you know, let's scale this a little bit. Uh, let me look at my, my top server. So I have, I have five uh, tags here that are ramping. So let, let's create five instances of this. Um, so I want to create uh, multiple instances of this template. So I just right click on that template and select that option. And just to open for a second. So what we end up seeing is something that looks a lot like Excel. And the reason being is it is really a lot like Excel. Um, so let's give our instance a name, instance one. And just like Excel, we can click and drag this down. It'll auto populate so all the way to instance five. And our OPC address here, well, let me actually double check with it's in the channels and the device. Channel. And you don't have to type this out. If you have this stored somewhere in an Excel file, you can copy and paste this in easily enough. And then SimTag1 through SimTag5. One, so that's our first tag that we want to monitor. And we want to monitor all the way to SimTag5. Um, so that's all there is. I now create my instances. Oh, actually, I guess I have to select which template I want to create the instances of. <laughs> um, and there's my five instances created now. Uh, so if I go back to my connection view, you can see I now I've scaled my one single demo login connection to five, where instance one is logging SimTag1, instance two is logging SimTag2, um, and so on. Um, this extra panel that's opened up is showing me any dynamic fields that I, uh, I designated in my template and what the value was that was provided when the template was created. Um, in theory, I could have made each and every one of these fields dynamic, and we really could have made this template completely configurable. But for, for a basic demo, I just wanted to make that tag something that I can change easily. Um, so now I have five connections. Let's set all of them productive. Um, and what we will see, let's set all of these guys productive. You can see, again, we, we see this green color um, because we're, we're uploading something new to the runtime service. Um, now we'll They'll jump over here and monitor our uh, our state. And so this uh, instance five, I, I think the tag was updating every five seconds. So this is going to be logging a lot slower than our instance one. But we can see our instance five has changing values. Um, and if we now jump over to our SQL server um, and rerun that uh, that file. You can see we have some variety in here. So now it's not only syntax one, but we have five, two, three, and four being logged to. Um, and so th that's how easy this could be to scale. Um, as with anything, there's multiple ways that I could have logged these values. We could have uh, used different triggers or different transfer objects. Uh, but, but for a very basic logging scenario, that's, that's as easy and as quick as it can be. Um, and if you're not just logging one tag, you're logging a thousand. Well, you can create use templates to quickly create those uh, thousand instances.